And so it all comes down to this. Will the members of Task Force X be able to save an island nation, avenge a friend, and clear their name all at once? Well, let's hop into the pages of Suicide Squad issue number 11, the grand finale of this Tom Taylor series, and find out together, shall we? So then, this issue actually opens up in probably the most unexpected way possible. We are in a morgue where we see Jog, the revolutionary's resident speedster, waking up from, well, death. He's met by the Black Racer, a powerful cosmic being usually related to the new gods and one of DC Comics' most prominent personifications of death. So then, it turns out, and there's probably a good chance no one in their right mind could probably have guessed this one, but Black Racer is actually Jog's long-lost absentee father, which in turn would explain his amazing speed powers. The Black Racer had waited for his son to die so they could finally be reunited, but just as he's about to tell his son of his great lineage and destiny, he could really care less. Jog's only interested in saving his team. Man, you know, you really gotta respect this level of priorities, and indeed, the team could very well use a super speedster right now as TNT is about to go nuclear and kill them all in a massive fireball that will also take out all of this island nation that Black Mask was trying to plunder. Luckily, Deadly Six is able to empower the shield abilities of Zebra Man by filling him with the Sin of Pride, while Jog is able to get TNT out to the ocean where she can explode less harmfully. And with that, believe it or not, the day is saved. Yeah, it really is that easy, and now all the revolutionaries and Harley have to do is figure out how they're gonna make Black Mask Roman Sionis pay for all the evil he's committed. Sadly, though, before they can go all medieval on his ass with a blowtorch and a pair of pliers, the Justice League opts to choose this moment to show up, and you know it's Taylor's version of the Justice League because Green Arrow actually got invited. The League wants to punish the squad and the revolutionaries, but believe it or not, it's here that the Ares mother actually steps on in to defend what their child's been up to. The President says that the squad are heroes and that if the Justice League actually cared about making the world a better place, they would have gone after all the American business business interests that were backing Black Mask, instead of harassing and hassling people who were truly victims all along, and you know what, this absolutely works, the Justice League backs off. That night is filled with much celebrating, but Harley doesn't exactly feel in a festive mood, she's the last remaining member of the old Suicide Squad, and she still has a lot of work ahead of her. Mainly bringing back Deadshot's mask to his daughter, while also letting her know that despite all of Floyd Lawton's many, many flaws, he still died pretty damn heroically. And while they don't exactly place this book in the bigger DC timeline, I like to imagine it was Harley's experience here that made her want to go and try and be a better person over in the James Tynan Batman book. Harley also makes it seem like she's going to stay in touch with Zoe, even offering her skills as a child psychologist for a kid who will almost certainly need it. Well, that's Harley's happy ending done with, but what about the revolutionaries? Where do they go next? Well, believe it or not, they go right back to work, rounding up all the corrupt military officials, captains of industry, and dirty politicians who all had a hand in funding and covering up for the Suicide Squad. Minus Amanda Waller, though, who seemingly managed to slip through the cracks, interestingly enough, the revolutionaries say that the squad is officially dead, but that they do not plan to take bloody revenge on their enemies. Only that they be allowed to operate with all the same immunities that Task Force X did, and if their wishes aren't granted, well, they have enough dirt to out all of these people and ruin their lives forever to the point they'd probably wish they were dead. As the comic winds down, the squad may have fallen, but the revolutionaries have risen, and they have a lot of work to do. And so, that was Suicide Squad issue number 11, everybody. And perhaps the worst thing I can say about this ending is that, well, I didn't want it to end. I wanted it to keep going, and I think they most certainly could have kept it going, but alas, this is the ending we were given. Taylor really did manage to craft one of the most exciting, enjoyable team books in probably all of comics right now, not just at DC. This is Suicide Squad the way I always wanted it, the way I always remembered it. A book where anyone could die at any minute, where the stakes were real and the characters themselves were all morally gray. Will some people perhaps argue that it was a little forced that the team was only saved in the end because one of the members found out they were part death god? Yeah, probably, but my hope is that the end of this book is actually a real promise, and we'll see more of the revolutionaries. 
As far as the squad themselves go, nothing in comics is ever gone forever, and I would bet dollars to donuts that around the same time that new James Gunn movie comes out, we'll be getting a new Suicide Squad book. As far as this finale goes, yes, it moves a little too fast for its own good, but overall I really enjoyed every minute of it, which is why I give it a much deserved 9 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watched to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.